the truth of you. I love it when Mother Nature chimes in when I'm thinking about something significant, or in this case, dreaming something. It was a recurring dream I've had my whole life of being the main character in the cast of a theatrical play. I had a few days to learn my lines before opening night, but kept procrastinating until a few minutes before the start of the production. I suddenly realized that I didn't know my lines at all, didn't know what the play was about, and I had no idea who my character was. The curtain rises with me in the middle of the stage among the cast, and apparently I had the first line since they were all staring at me to start. All I could do was say, Welcome! which was apparently the correct line since another cast member replied. Right at that moment in the dream sequence, Mother Nature intervened to wake me up with a start. A bolt of lightning amid one of those Kansas midnight thunder showers brightly flashed through my bedroom window with a simultaneous loud crack of thunder, followed immediately by an explosion like you would hear at a fireworks finale. I recognized it as a power transformer exploding. Immediately, the power went out in the neighborhood. All this commotion thoroughly woke me up, along with the memory of the dream I was having, which was now becoming significant due to Mother Nature's exclamation point. I turned over on my back, staring at the ceiling in the complete darkness of the power outage, reliving the dream, and was struck by the metaphor of human incarnation. Before we come into this life, there is a script we can choose to learn or not. Should we choose to learn it, our incarnated human life becomes a rote, predictable procedure with little creative substance. Should we opt out of learning the script, the incarnate life pivots around choices we make, focusing on how and what we are being. Now at any moment you can choose to go off script, revealing to the world who and what you truly are, with no predetermined discourse that defines your character in the screenplay, no predictable line that telegraphs your reactions to the audience. It's just you being you. The expectation coming into this life is to get into your part, as described by the script. This is the expectation of controllers who need you to follow the script in order to maintain control over your soul. We choose whether or not to throw away the script and freely wing it, but then this is a threat to the controllers who now must make you pay for that freedom, invoking the backup script of the master-slave drama. This can hook us into the dualism of fighting tyranny, rebelling against authorities, and being trouble to the state and nation. All we've accomplished is reciting the lines from another play, and at the end, the audience applauds our bravery and heartfelt patriotism as we are dragged off to the gallows. There is no fight in freedom. The controllers have all the money, all the soldiers, all the bombs, and care a whole lot more than you do about winning. Fight them and you'll lose. It's just the way the script runs. True freedom for the world, on the other hand, is found in the truth of you. The pure creative power of you off script. The you that you are when there are no definitions of you to fall back on. No opposition to define you as the opposite. You are being and doing you regardless of agendas, tyrannical mandates, or the screaming demands to behave and follow the script. This is divine will gushing through your heart to express what only you can express in the world. It is this pure uniqueness that dissolves all tyranny, inspires others to go off script, and rips away all the contrivances of control. The sheer unadulterated truth of you towers far above and beyond all earthly conflicts, goes way beyond any petty scripting, and lands you squarely in the wondrous and beautiful field of creation that is you. God's creation is ever-expanding, without end, and depends on you being you. That uniqueness is driving all of creation. It is the spear of divine will and intent, and when we decide to bury our heads in the script and be good and learn our lines, we've effectively blocked universal expansion and created a frozen comfort zone of compliance, complicity, and complacency. Those trapped in the script fear those who are not, 
who threaten the comfort zone and who reveal the potentials of creation without end possible in every being everywhere. This fear obscures the truth that we are all immortal, conscious points of love, radiating only harmony, coherence, and joy. But the script has written love out of the story, relegating it to mere moments of infatuation or some brief passion that quickly subsides. This is acceptable to the controllers as it keeps the cast of the play believing they are acting out a full life of human emotions, the sad reward of compliance. It is the compliant who attack the free, but those who are truly free won't see it as an attack. They see their attackers as infinite beings squashed and blocked into a comforting box called should be. The should be box has been gleefully installed by the controllers specifically to create suffering from which they can feed on the depravity of anger, pain, frustration, and failure. This unholy communion of the bread of death nourishes and encourages the controllers in their quest for ultimate power. Of course, from the creator's viewpoint, it's a fool's errand guaranteed to dissolve in the love bath of divine will. And this is precisely why we need not concern ourselves with whether or not we win over the darkness of slavery. All that is needed by God is the truth of you that burns away all the scripts in the bonfire of pure being. There is no greater power in all creation. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX www.pureenergyrx.com